Hey guys, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys a six month update on these 10 orchids that I got from Sunset Valley Orchids. I got these orchids back in January and I repotted them in mid-February. They've been in a full semi-hydroponic setup for six months. So I'm going to show you um, how I repotted these. I still have the original footage, which I'll show you and then show you uh, how they've been growing these last six months. I'll put footage side by side so you could see the differences. And um, there's a lot that's about to be in bloom. So I'm really excited to show you guys all the changes. Um, before jumping right in, I just want to thank everyone for getting me so close to 1,000 subscribers. I started this channel last summer um, just because I started getting more orchids and I wanted to... Um, do something outside of my job when we were on lockdown and it's been so nice to to meet so many of you guys who've been watching i've met some uh, folks in person that have come across my channel and i've been um talking to a lot of you guys now for almost a year and it's it's been fantastic and i just want to thank you so much for the support Anyway, with that being said, let's jump right in and I'll show you guys how I repotted these orchids and how they're doing. So when I repotted this back in January, I used a semi-hydroponic setup and I wanted to add a water indicator. So I used a soldering iron to put some holes in it, a test tube and some straws to see if I can get a minimum level and a maximum level. Um, I got this idea from Annabelle over at the orchid room. So I'll link her video down below where she shows how to set this up. But I wanted to give this a go and see how it worked for me. It works okay. Um, sometimes the indicator isn't as accurate as I would like, especially when I'm flushing, it gets stuck sometimes. So I need to tweak it a little bit to make sure that it runs smoothly. Otherwise, um, I like the setup and it's reliable maybe 75% of the time. So I make sure that water isn't flowing on the floor, which is great. As always, I start my repots by soaking the pots in my sink for a little while. Um, and then that just makes sure that the roots are a little bit softer and a little bit more manageable. What I find with these orchids is because they were a part of the end of year sale, they were probably in the greenhouse for a while. So some of them were quite root bound and a little bit more difficult to repot. Um, this one in particular was really, really tough. But anyway, I got the media out. I took my new pots and my new orchids, which all had very good root systems. And I started repotting them into uh, a LECA semi-hydroponic setup. So after I took the medium out, what I did is I put LECA in as I normally do. And I put the Cattleya down right into the, uh, the medium. And you know, I think I'll probably need to be repotting these very soon just because they do have quite extensive root systems, some of them. But so far, um, I knew I was going to lose some of those roots and I repotted because I saw a lot of uh, new green root tips. So I knew it was the right time to move forward. So what I did after soaking, after taking the medium off, which took a while, I filled the pot around with LECA. And I made sure that there was a very um, tight setup of LECA um, in contrast with potting things up in organic media where you want more air. With LECA, you want less air because there's always going to be air gaps around this just because it's the LECA is a sphere. Um, you want it tight so that it can wick the moisture up. So that's why I'm pressing everything down and making sure that the LECA is in nice and tight. So as you can see, those new root tips up top look good. I know I'm going to lose a lot of that root system, which is totally fine. But I filled around and made sure that this was good to go. I did this for all of the Cattleyas, the Catacetums I repotted separately with uh, sphagnum moss and I topped these off with a layer of pebbles to keep the top layer uh, moist. And let me show you guys how they look right now. 
So the first one I'm going to show you is the Cattleya claysiana. So this is a beautiful miniature Cattleya orchid. It had new root tips when I repotted it, so I knew it was going to adapt very well. It had six different canes when I repotted, and let me show you what it looks like now. So after I repotted it, it started working on another new growth, and then a about two months ago, it pushed out an additional growth. So those canes in the beginning there that I'm showing, those are the ones that it came with. And it grew that cane and it grew that additional cane at the very end. Now it pushed the sheath out, which dried out unfortunately and did not bloom. And this new cane over here, I don't see a sheath it at all yet, but hopefully we'll start seeing some blooms happening soon but we'll see how it goes. Um, one thing that I noticed upon uh, transitioning this orchid is that it looks really, really healthy. So as you can see, this orchid went from smaller growths to progressively larger growths, which is what I look for in a Cattleya. Now, with that being said, it lost its two uh, leaves on its initial canes, which is completely normal. So I just went ahead and pulled those off. But those were the, uh, the two canes where it lost its original leaves. In all, this was a very successful transition. Uh, this orchid looks very healthy and I think it's going to do very well. Hopefully I'll get blooms by the end of the year. Um, this is a nice miniature Cattleya orchid. Next up is the Potnera Spring Prominence. This one came with four canes with one of those canes missing a leaf. And this actually arrived to me in bud. Um, so I waited until the buds were done before I repotted it but it had uh, three buds, which was really, really nice. This was an orchid that was given to me for free, which was great. And when the blooms opened, it was absolutely beautiful. It had a slight fragrance and it was very beautiful. The one thing I'll say about this orchid is that it had some leaf spotting on it. Um, I'm not sure what that was about, but that's probably why I got it for free. But let me show you what it looks like now and you'll see what I'm talking about with regards to the spotting. So here's what she looks like now. As you can see on the left, I tied up the three canes that it came with. Um, the fourth one that didn't have a leaf isn't tall enough, but those are the originals. And then as you can see on the right hand side, we've got an additional uh, growth right there, which is in sheath, which is great. So I can't wait to see this bloom again. And then it also is working on an additional growth. So this one's doing well, and in six months, pushing out a brand new growth with a sheath and an additional uh, growth is just fantastic. You could sort of see the leaf spotting right there, which is what it came with, but I'll say I was surprised as I was looking at this because it has an additional growth coming in. It's very small, but it's three new growths all together. Not bad for six months. This orchid is very vigorous, and the leaf spotting that I saw had no caused no issue with this orchid at all. So I look forward to seeing this bloom in the next month or so. Next, I'll show you the BLC Pico Tea Flight crossed with the BLC Love Blush. This uh, orchid is doing pretty well. Um, let me show you what it looks like right now. So this orchid's really nice, very healthy. The leaves are pristine. I did have to cut off a tip of a leaf because I did have a little bit of a fungal infection show up. So I took care of it right away. It pushed out this new growth over here in the last six months, which is great. And it's also adapted to Lekka pretty well. You could see uh, one of the new root tips coming in, but otherwise it's got a new growth and... Um, this is doing very well. The canes didn't even shrivel. But let me actually show you, um, If I let me take you a little bit closer because it's actually working on an, a second new growth in six months. So if you could see right there, there's a little, a little nubbin. So it's gonna push out another growth. So this one's really nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful orchid. And so far it's adapted really well. I'd just give this a thumbs up just because it's really, really healthy. I just wish it wasn't so wonky. <laughs> So the next one I'm gonna show you is the Potnera uh, Golden Circle crossed with the LC um, Tokyo Magic. So this one was also very healthy, a very good looking orchid. I just say that the leaves poke out a lot, just like the other one. So it does take up um, some horizontal space, but otherwise this orchid was very healthy. Let me show you what it looks like now. 
So as you can see, I tied up the original leaves that it came with just to try to save a little bit more space. So everything that's tied up and the um, leaves in the front, the canes in the front rather, came with the orchid. But if we turn this around, you'll see that it has a brand new growth with a sheath on it. So I cannot wait for this orchid to bloom. Um, and if we also take a look closer look, it's also pushing out two additional growths. So in total, this orchid in six months has pushed out three new growths. And I'm just really happy that I potted this up uh, closer to the other side so that these two growths have some more wiggle room. I'm very happy with this and I can't wait to see it bloom. I unfortunately didn't get a close up of this next one. It's the middle one in the back, but I will show you what it looks like right now. Um, this one is the Izumi Charm across with the Potanera What About Love. And um, this one is also doing very well. It pushed out a new growth. It also lost one of the leaves in the back, which is absolutely normal. But in six months, the original growths are fine. They're not shriveled or anything. And then it's pushing out this new growth. Now, I'll say that this new growth looks a little bit wonky. You'll see that it's much shorter than the original growth. And um, I don't know. It looks like it's trying to form a leaf. I don't know if it has a sheath in there. There's sort of like three different things going on, which I can't figure out, but we'll see how it does over time. Roots have adapted very well, and um, it's actually pushing out, it looks like two additional growths, which is great. Um, so we'll see how it does, um, and we'll see how tall this gets. So let's see. All right, this next one is probably the most vigorous of the bunch. This one is the Potanera Martha Clark crossed with the LC Tropical Aurora. And I took a picture of it just because when it came out of the box, it just looks so healthy. So let me show you what it looks like right now. So Sunset Valley Orchids has some very vigorous orchids. And oh my goodness, this one is probably the most vigorous of the bunch. So these are the growths that it came with in the middle. And then this orchid pushed out two additional growths on the outside. And not only did it push out uh, two additional growths, but each of the new growths have pushed out uh, sheaths on them. So these orchids, this orchid will actually bloom very soon. And I'm very excited to see it. Now, this orchid did have some spotting on its leaves, but I noticed that the uh, new leaves had no spotting, so I don't, I'm not too worried about it. And the new growths, rather, the maturing growths are rivaling the size of the older growths. So I'm just pleased with this one overall, and this is just really healthy. I cannot wait to see this bloom. All right, it is catacetum time. So I did not record these guys being repotted along with the rest of the haul, but let me show you the cloacetum jumbo york. So I made a mistake of watering this a little bit too early. This is one of those orchids that went into that had a new growth very quickly. I watered it maybe three months ago and I noticed that the roots just stopped growing and then the leaves this week started turning uh, yellow and they're falling off. Now the back bulb is super dried out now, so I've started reintroducing water to see what I can do. Ultimately, I think this was my mistake because I watered too early, though it was the one that pushed out a new growth sort of early. But if we take a closer look, we'll see that there's a new growth that's pushing through that old cane, but I'm a little bit worried about this one because that new growth never matured and it looks like it's dying, so. I'm very disappointed because this is one of those catacetums that I really, really wanted. And, um, you know, it's not doing well. I guess I got cocky with my Millennium Magic, but we'll see how it does. Alrighty, up next is the Cygnochis Brown's Choice. And this is one I've been looking forward to for a really long time. Now, this is not showing any signs of roots except for that tiny puny little root right there. So I haven't been watering it just because the Jumbo York, I screwed that up. So I figured let me give it some time. And then this back bulb just looks like crap. <laughs> so the back bulb just really got desiccated uh, about two weeks ago. So I was just like, you know what? You're going to get water even though the root system isn't that big. 
Oh, I was really, really, really looking forward to this one. I hope that by introducing water, it just rehydrates, but that back bulb looking so dry is just not great. But seeing one root as well isn't great. We're in the middle of July, so I don't know what's up with this, but I hope it pulls through. Up next is another sick no cheese. This one's the Richard Brandon cross with the Marin Gleason. This one actually came for free because it came broken. It had a bloom before and it had a flower spike and I actually took the top piece off to see if maybe it would grow, but it doesn't look like it's going to do anything. Um, it's got two new growths coming in, which is fantastic. And, um, my only gripe with this one is that it hasn't pushed out any new roots. So, Maybe the only thing I did wrong here was cutting off all the roots. I don't know, but it's still not pushing roots. So at this point, I'm just going to give it water. I don't know if it's stressed because the new growth was broken or what, but I'm giving it water. We're going to see how it goes. All right, the last catasetum that I'm going to show you is probably doing the best of the bunch. So this one is catasetum dentigrianum, cross with catasetum, memoria raul, uh, minato pineda. And this one has a root coming down, maybe a couple roots, but it's not at the point where I would like it to be. Um, I haven't started watering, but I will this week just because I don't want that back bulb to get super desiccated and it's really, really warm. I am just so confused over why these catasetums aren't doing as well for me as some of the others. I don't know if it's because they arrived for me during winter. I mean, for sure the back one was broken, so that makes sense. But Brown's Choice and, and Jumbo York, I really wanted those. I just don't get it. The other, the other catasetums I have are in active growth. Some have bloomed, some are in spike right now, and I just don't get it. So I hope these all pull through. I'm just going to go ahead and water them. If they die, they die, um, <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys liked this update video. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite. And um, thank you guys, as always, so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more updates like this. I like to do six month, one year updates on all of my orchids. And um, thanks again for watching, guys. Bye.